our topic for today is fluid mechanics. This is the contents of uh, this lecture. The first we start with uh, density, definitions of density, what is pressure, and then uh, we introduce the Pascal's principle. And then we introduce Archimedes' principle. And the last one is the equation of continuity and Bernoulli's theorem. A fluid is defined as any substance that can flow and hence liquids and gases are both considered to be fluids. Microscopic approach deals with molecules. Macroscopic approach analyzes the fluid in terms of its large-scale characteristics such as density, pressure and distribution in space. So fluid mechanics is fluid statics and hydrodynamics and fluid dynamics or hydrodynamics. So let's define what is density. Density of a substance is defined as the amount of mass in a unit volume of that substance. Density is noted with the letter rho and rho equal to mass divided by volume. So the unit of SI units of density is kilograms per meters cube. So that means uh, the density is the meaning of the density is how much kilograms of the substance per cubic meter. For example, here in the table, the densities of various materials are uh, given for in gases, uh, liquids, and solids. For example, from this uh, table you can see that the air has a density of 1 kilogram, 1.29 kilogram per cubic meter. And the water, the, the water pure is more, exactly 1 kilogram per cubic meter, uh, 1000 kilogram per cubic meter. And some metals, for example, copper is 8920 kilograms per cubic meter. So here you can compare the densities of all materials. And uh, if you if you look at this uh, table, the gold has 19,300 kilograms per cubic meter, the, and mercury is 13,630. Uh, the, among the liquids, the highest density has a mercury. So now let's define what is pressure. Pressure is defined as a magnitude of a force of the normal force acting per unit surface area. It's a scalar quantity. So pressure is noted as a letter P. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. So unit of the pressure is Pascal and one Pascal is such a pressure which acts um, to meter square area with one Newton force, normal force. This is a unit of pressure in SI unit system. So Pascal is the name of Blaise Pascal, French mathematician and physicist. And in British engineering system we have Psi. So one Psi is one uh, pound divided by inch square. And in order to convert from Psi to Pascal or from Pascal to Psi, you can use this factor. So 1 Pascal is 1.45, 10 to the minus 4 Psi. So what is the pressure of a fluid? So this is a fluid. You imagine that uh, we have a fluid which has a height h and here you, you can see that it has an effect to the bottom of the of this, this uh, um, container and to the walls of this container and the liquid the pressure for the liquid is also defined as force divided by area and the force here is the weight of the water inside this um, um, 
container and the weight divided by area and weight is mass multiplied by g and mass is density multiplied by volume and the volume of this uh, figure shape is area multiplied by height and and from here we can cancel out area and we get the equation for pressure exerted by a fluid this is called hydrostatic equation the pressure of a fluid at any depth h is given by the product of density of the fluid the acceleration due to gravity g and the depth h in general the total atmospheric pressure observed at the depth h in the pool is the sum of atmospheric pressure plus the pressure of the water itself that is this is a pressure absolute pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure plus pressure of the water for example in this picture the total pressure at this point is equal to the sum of atmospheric pressure p0 and pressure exerted by a fluid by the water this is uh, how to measure uh, atmospheric pressure by using the Torricelli's barometer. So barometer is is the device to measure atmospheric pressure. This is Evangelista Torricelli, Italian uh, scientist, physicist, is measured first time by using the mercury barometer. This is the tube, the glass tube, it's closed from one side and it's open from the other side. The Torricelli fills this tube with uh, mercury first and then submerge to another um, container with, with mercury and then the mercury becomes to uh, to flow out, out of this tube and here it has a vacuum this is a vacuum and and he measured the height of this um, mercury, mercury tube, height of the mercury inside the tube, and he measured that this is equal to 760 millimeters. It depends why the, here we have a vacuum and why here we have exact this uh, value of, of the height of the mercury. The reason for that is the equilibrium between the pressure given by this mercury and the outer, outer atmospheric pressure. Mm. So from this side, pressure acts to, to the mercury from the atmosphere. This is P0, is the atmospheric pressure. And from other side, we have a pressure of a mercury. So in equilibrium, um, P0 equal to P mercury and from this formula and knowing that the formula for um, pressure of the mercury is rho gh as we seen this is hydrostatic pressure there is no air here that's why from this side we don't add atmospheric pressure p0 because this is a vacuum and it has no external additional pressure and from this equation we can calculate that the atmospheric pressure uh, can be calculated um, in Pascal's knowing the density of the mercury which is given here and G is 9.8 and uh, H in which is 760 millimeters is 0 0.76 meters and calculating this we get about 100,000 Pascal's so that means one atmospheric pressure is equal to can be measured um, the units for atmospheric pressure can be atm with me which means uh, atmos atmosphere or it can be in millimeters mercury uh, which is 760 or we can call it tor from the word torricelli because it is from torricelli's experiment Mm, and in inches it's um, this is in millimeters this is in inches 
and pascals is 101.35 kilopascal. This is in British engineering system is 14.7 lb per inch square, pound per inch square. Or this is also called 1013 millibar. This is measure can be one bar is 10 to the 3 millibars is one um, 100,000 pascals. So this is a mercury barometer of Torricelli. And other types of barometers are uh, aneroid barometer and altimeter. So this is a Pascal's law that tells you that it doesn't depend on the shape of the of the container of the tube. So pressures at points A, B, and C and D are equal to each other because it depends only on the on the height of the liquid or on the depth of the liquid, not on the shape of the of the container. So. So this is the problem, the question problem, interesting problem. So why you get tired by the end of the day? The top of your professor's head is approximately circular with a radius of 3.5 inches. What force is exerted on the top of the professor's head by normal atmospheric pressure? So this is a radius given in inches. You can convert it to the meters and or centimeters or millimeters and then calculate <coughs> the area of the head of the of your of your prof professor and and then by knowing the atmospheric pressure you can calculate the force uh, by using force equal to pressure multiplied by area so this is the solution of this problem area can be found as pi r square where r, r is radius and area is in, in inch square is 38.5 and from this formula f equals pa so pressure multiplied by area we get uh, 566 pounds so well, this is large force to have exerted on your heads all, all day long However, however, we don't notice the enormous force because when we breathe air into our no nose or mouth, that air is exerting the same force upward inside our head. Thus, the difference in force between the top of the head and the inside of the head is zero in equilibrium. So, after an exciting but ex exhausting lecture, a uh, physics professor stretches out for a nap on a bed of nails as in figure suffering no injury and only moderate discomfort how is this possible so this is explanation if you try to support your entire weight on a single nail the pressure on your body is your weight divided by the very small area of the end of the nail the resulting pressure is large enough to penetrate the skin if you distribute your weight over several hundred nails, however, as demonstrated by the professor, the pressure is considerably reducible, reduced because the area that supports your weight is the total area of all nails in contact with your body. Why is lying on the bed of nails more comfortable than standing on a bed of nails without shoes? So, now talk about absolute pressure and gauge pressure. So if the pressure inside a car tire is equal to atmospheric pressure, the tire is flat. The pressure has to be greater than the atmospheric to support the car. So significant quantity is the difference between the inside and outside pressure. When we say that the pressure in a car tire is 32 pounds, actually 32 pounds per inch square equal to 220 kilopascal. We mean that it is greater than atmospheric pressure by this amount. The total pressure in the tire is then 
47 lb per inch square or 320 kilopascal. The exercise, excess pressure above atmospheric pressure is usually called gauge pressure and the total pressure is called absolute pressure. Engineers use the abbreviation psi g and psi a, psi g and psi a for pounds per square inch gauge and pounds per square inch absolute respectively. If the pressure is less than atmospheric, as in partial vacuum, the gauge pressure is negative. Example, a storage tank 20, 12 meters deep is filled with water. The top of the tank is open to the air. What is the absolute pressure at the bottom of the tank? What is the gauge pressure? So you can calculate uh, pressure by using um, Pascal, Pascal's formula by using uh, uh, static pressure, hydrostatic pressure formula, and knowing the density of the water, which is equal to 1000 kg per meter cube, and calculate the gauge pressure. And by adding the atmospheric pressure, you get the absolute pressure. This is the solution of this problem. The absolute pressure is P0 atmospheric pressure plus hydrostatic pressure. So this is atmospheric pressure plus density G and the height is 12 meters. You get 2.16 atmosphere or 2.19 10 to the 5 Pascal. And the gauge pressure is the difference P minus P0 or just rho GH which is equal to 1.18 10 to the 5 Pascal. This is gauge pressure. So in this picture you can see the variation in pressure with height above the Earth's surface. For each 5.5 kilometers increase in height, the pressure decreases by half. So this is at zero altitude, which is equal to atmospheric pressure equal to one atmosphere. And at the distance at the height of 5.5 kilometers, the pressure is one half ATM. And dividing it by two, I mean, uh, at uh, 11 kilometers, twice big, high, higher is one over four. And this is a decrease of the pressure. So this is can, can be found by using the barometric formula. Now let's talk about the Pascal's principle. This is a, a device which consists of two cylinders connected by the tube and filled with, with fluid. And from both cylinders has two, each, each one has pistons. One cylinder is has greater area, area capital A and other is smaller area small a. The Pascal's principle states that if the pressure at any point in an enclosed fluid at rest is changed by delta P, the pressure changes by an equal amount delta P at all points in the fluid. That means if we change the pressure from the one side of this tube, this change can be uh, measured from the other side, can be felt from the other side of this uh, tube. That means pressure from this side is equal to pressure from this side. Or delta P F divided by A, or delta P is capital F divided by capital A. By equating these two formula, we, we get that F over A is capital F over capital A. From here we can find the force F, capital F, is equal to capital A divided by A multiplied by F. That means if you put here, uh, for example, one kilogram uh, body and the difference of the areas is five times, for example, you can put here from the other side five kilograms and, and the system will be in equilibrium. Here. In ideal case, we have the conservation of energy, which means work done in this process equal to work done in this process. So by 
uh, pushing the liquid downwards from this side gives you the same amount of work from the lifting the another bigger piston to the to the uh, upwards with the work W2. From these equations we get, we get so work is um, force multiplied by distance and force is uh, pressure multiplied by area and you get this formula since a is much greater than uh, small a so y1 must be greater than y2 this is called hydraulic lift so it's capable to multiplying the force as I explained it just so uh, where can we use this hydraulic machine, hydraulic lift? This can be used in hydraulic brakes, brake system. Here we have the hydraulic machine with the piston. And when, when the person pushes the brake pedal here, the piston here is moves the liquid inside this tube. To the, to the right and it goes down and it acts to the pressure with the pressure to the left and to the right pistons here and these pistons moves these brakes brake linings and brake shoes and this is a wheel and the rotating wheel go it acts by by this uh, brake shoes and the friction here gives you the brake work, how the brake works in the automobiles or in other transports. Next we, to, next we talk about the Arch Archimedes principle. This is co called buoyance, buoyancy. So everybody, every of you uh, <coughs> sometimes you go to the pool and swim on the pool or on the lake or river and you feel that some force acts to, to your body and lifts you upward and you feel lighter in, inside the water what this happens this is called buoyancy the upward force is called the buoyant force and is a consequence of pressure increasing with depth why this happens? Because we, we, we see that the, at the bottom of the body the pressure is higher than the above of the body pressure of the liquid because of the height of the water is greater at the bottom than at the above of the body this is causes the buoyant force So, this is Archimedes principle. It is about the uh, buoyance force. So, a completely submerged object always displaces a volume of a liquid equal to its own volume. This is Archimedes principle. And it tells you that an immersed object is by, by it up a force equal to the weight of the fluid it displaces. So the Archimedes force is equal to the weight of the water which is displaced. Or it can be any any type of another liquid. To prove that we compare the forces from the bottom and the top of the body. So pressures at the top and the bottom are given from this formula and the force can be found by pressure multiplied by area of the body and buying force is the difference of these two forces by taking the difference of these two forces we can see that it's equal to the mass of the um, immersed uh, the mass of the displaced water multiplied by g this is the weight of the displaced water So this is a problem. A block of oak wood, five centimeters high, 
5 cm wide and 10 cm long is placed into a tube of water, as shown in figure. The density of the wood is 7.2 10 to the 2 kg per meter cube. How far will the block of wood sink before it floats? So try to solve this problem by yourself. So this is another example about the iron. Iron sinks. So block of iron has a density of 7,860 kg per meter cube and iron block sinks. But ships are made of iron and they do not sink. Why should the block sink and not the ship? If the same weight of iron is made into thin slabs, these thin slabs could be welded together into a boat structure of some kind. By increasing the size and hence the volume of this iron boat, a greater volume of water can be displaced. An increasing in volume of water displaced increases the buoyant force. If this can be made equal to the weight of the iron boat, then the boat floats. Another example, another question. A rock is thrown into the swimming pool filled with a water of uniform temperature. Which of the following statements true? The buying force of the rock is zero as it sinks. The buying force on the rock increases as it sinks. The buying force on the rock decreases as it sinks. The buying force on the rock is constant as it sinks. And the last, the buying force on the rock as it sinks is non-zero at first but becomes zero once the terminated velocity is reached. So think about this, this question and try to answer by yourself. Next question. A 20 cm cube block of lead and 20 cm cube block of copper are completely underwater. Each is suspended by a thread just above the bottom of an aquarium filled with water. Which of the following is true? The buying force is greater on the lead than on the copper. The buying force is greater on the copper than on the lead. The buying force is the same on the both blocks. More information is needed to choose the correct answer. I'll try to answer this question. Next question is a 200 gram block of lead and 200 gram block of copper are completely underwater. Each is suspended by a thread just above the bottom of an aqu aquarium filled with water. Which of the following is true? The buying force is greater on the lead than on the copper. The buying force is greater on the copper than on the lead. The buying force is the same on both blocks. More information is needed to choose the correct answer. Now we try to explain the fluids in motion and this is called hydrodynamics. Here we made some assumptions. The fluid is incompressible. This is ideal fluid. It falls freely without any turbulence. A fluid flowing steadily without turbulence is referred to be as being in streamlined flow can be neglected the friction between the various parts of the fluid itself and boundary condition con and boundary in containing the fluid such as the walls of a pipe such fluid is called a non-viscous fluid so these three assumptions is made to be liquid and ideal liquid or in other words this is called Newtonian liquids and it leads to the conservation of mass Conservation of mass leads to the equation of continuity. And conservation of energy leads to Bernoulli's theorem. Let's talk, talk about these this laws, conservation laws. The equation of continuity. Let, imagine this kind of two tubes connected with each other. 
which has uh, different cross-section areas. The a with the tube with greater area and the tube with the smaller area. So, and imagine that the fluid flows inside these tubes. Then, let's talk about the velocities of these uh, fluids inside the, each part of, of the tubes. So here you can see that the mass, how much mass flows inside from, from the left side of this and greater area too the same amount of water should be go to outside from the right the smaller right tube because our fluid is incompressible that's why the mass of the fluid incoming per unit time from the left is equal to the mass of the fluid outgoing from the right tube per unit time. So let's analyze this by mathematically. So delta M is the mass of the fluid flowing per unit time or per some fixed time T which is equal to density multiplied by volume. And volume here can be found as area multiplied by the distance during this time, which uh, distance to which fluid flows during this fixed time or unit time. And the distance is equal to velocity multiplied by time. So by using these three formulas, we can found that uh, the mass flowing from, from the left side per unit time which is equal to density multiplied by area and velocity. The same thing can be found, can be written to, to the motion of the fluid inside the, the right part of the tube. The same formula, but here we have different area and different velocity. Now, by making equal these two formula, we can, we can see that so delta m divided by delta t delta m divided by delta t we can see a row can be cancelled out and when we get this equation which is called equation of continuity or for example you can find v2 from here as shown here and if area a1 is greater than area a2 then we get v2 is greater than v1 that means if the area is is big then velocity of the fluid is small if the area is small then velocity of the fluid is great higher so we get the formula av is constant this is another form of equation of continuity Now let's talk about the Bernoulli's theorem. Let's apply the energy conservation for the fluid flow inside this kind of tube. So this tube also consists of two parts, the greater cross-section area part and the smaller cross-section area part. But uh, they are at the different heights. And with different pressure. F pressure from this side is P1 and pressure on this side is P2. Now we can write the work done on the system in this case. So work is multiplied by force, work is equal to force multiplied by the distance. And the force is pressure multiplied by area. And then we have from these two formula we can find that work is equal to pressure multiplied by change in volume because area multiplied by distance gives you volume. The same thing can be written for this right smaller tube part. 
Now let's apply the energy conservation law to this system or work energy relation because here we have a work and work done on the system equal to the change in total energy because the forces perform a work which causes the change in total energy and if we write total energy as the sum of potential and kinetic energies then we can obtain so here it's written the potential energy kinetic energy on the left left part of the tube and the right part of the tube and substitute to this formula then we get Bernoulli's formula which tells you that the pressure P1 plus hydrostatic pressure plus this is called hydrodynamic pressure 1 over 2 rho v1 square so this pressure is caused by the motion of the liquid with velocity v1 square it conserves that means the same thing we can write for right hand side for right part of the tube this is very important formula According to this formula, we can we can uh, discuss that um, if we have smaller velocity, we have higher pressure. If we have higher velocity, we have smaller pressure. This is very important um, assumption, a very important uh, theorem. Example: In figures, the pressure is. 2.94 10 to the 3 newtons per meter square whereas the velocity of the water is v1 0 0.322 meters per second the diameter of the pipe at location 1 is 10 centimeter and 5 meter above the ground if the diameter of the pipe at location 2 is 4 centimeter and the pipe is 2 meter above the ground find the velocity of water v2 at position 2 and the pressure p2 of the water at position 2 so we can use equation of continuity and equation of Bernoulli to solve this problem this is a special case of Bernoulli's theorem where the our tube is located horizontally here we can assume that h1 and h2 are equal to each other and equal to zero because we can choose our reference frame at this point and it becomes zero and it gives us we can neglect this h rho g h1 and rho g h2 and our formula simplifies to this so the effect of decrease in pressure with the increase in speed fluid in horizontal pipe is called the Venturi effect this is a Venturi effect formula for Venturi effect so from from this formula we can find the velocity of v1 So let's see some applications of Bernoulli's theorem. This is the curving baseball or any kind of, of ball which rotates with spin. So if without spin we have uh, velocities of the air during the motion. So this is velocity of the air with respect to the ball and without spinning we, they are equal to each other on the top and on the bottom the velocities are equal to each other but if we throw the ball with the spin so if it spins the clockwise as shown here then velocity from this side is velocity of air plus velocity of spin and from this side velocity of air minus velocity of spin the difference of two velocities gives you the difference of the pressures 
and the difference of pressure leads to the change in trajectory of the ball. So this ball will move to this side rather than this. Another application of Bernoulli's theorem is lift on an airplane wing. So this is airplane wing and, and because of its shape, special sh kind of shape, the velocity uh, from the bottom and from the top of the, the wing are different. So velocity V2 is here higher, uh, velocity here is lower and velocity here is higher. It leads, to, according to the Bernoulli theorem, it leads to that the pressure at the bottom is will be higher th than the pressure at the top. And it gives you the lifting force of the airplane wing. Now let's talk about another problem which is about the leaking tank. So this tank contains water with some small hole and and water leaks from this tank. According to the Bernoulli's equation, we can write that we can assume that the velocity of the, this end of the water is very small comparing to the velocity of the, this fluid flow. So we can take VA equal to zero. And we can write Bernoulli's formula. And from this formula, we can say that the pressure outside from two sides are equal to each other and equal to atmospheric pressure. And then pressure also cancels out and, and we get the formula. So if the pressure cancels out, we can find from here velocity at, at point B. And then we get this formula. This is called Torricelli's formula. Okay, this was our uh, lecture about uh, liquids, uh, hydrostatics and hydrodynamics. Uh, thank you for your attention.